Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. In the previous session, uh, we had discussed uh, two types of bond. One is called coupon bond and another is called zero coupon bond. So in the case of zero coupon bond, we saw that the bond that do not come with any coupon payment. This is one example we have shown there. And we also discussed India's treasury bill is a zero coupon bond and we have discussed this in detail in previous section. And now uh, let us discuss how to determine the present value of a zero coupon bond. So the formula for calculating for any T year discount bond, the formula the price of bond can be calculated as face value divided by 1 plus i raised to T, the time period. So as I mentioned here, F is the face value of the discount bond and P the current price of the discount bond and T is the time to maturity. So from this formula uh, you can also see that there is an inverse relationship between interest rate and bond price. So just look at this formula suppose the, the price of here the price of this bond is equal to face value divided by 1 plus I. Suppose if you uh, increase this i, the value of this i, suppose initially it was 5 percentage, uh, when you increase this one to make it to 10, 10 percentage, you can see that obviously from this value formula itself you can see that when you raise the rate of interest from 5 percentage to 10 percentage, when you raise the rate of interest, uh, you can see that the price of bond. Uh, it will be declining from this uh, formula itself you can see that when you plug some numerical some values in this example in this formula uh, you can see that when you raise the uh, interest rate when you raise the value of i the price of bond will decline or otherwise in contrast if you reduce the rate of interest or in the market suppose in the market the rate of interest decline then you can see that the price of bond will be increasing so from this formula itself you can see that there is an inverse relationship between interest rate and bond price. This inverse relationship between interest rate and the bond price uh, we can also understand is using an illustrative example. So by you going through the bond price calculation the formula that you we used here in the zero coupon bond and in the, even in the coupon bond there also you can directly calculate. So this inverse relationship let us also use calculate is using some illustrative example. Before that uh, I just want to add some more points with regard to the coupon bond. When the coupon bond is priced at its face value the yield to maturity equals the coupon rate. The price of a coupon bond and yield to maturity are negatively related that the price of the bond and the yield to maturity that means yield to maturity is nothing but uh, rate of interest right they are negatively related and yield to maturity is greater than the coupon rate uh, when the bond price is below its face value what if the current market rate of interest rate changes means i is not equal to the coupon rate which is actual reality so in this case, uh, let us see how, what is the relationship between how uh, yield to maturity that the market rate of interest or the yield to maturity changes. So in this case, uh, let us take the, an example of uh, calculate the yield to maturity market interest rate on a 10 percentage uh, coupon rate bond maturing in 10 years. Suppose the face value of this bond is 1000. So this is the bond value, suppose the face value is 1000 and suppose the and the coupon pay rate coupon rate also we say that this is 10 percent suppose the current rate of interest the yield to maturity that i this one suppose this one is 10 percentage so here when the yield to maturity this one is equal to the coupon rate 
when this one is equal to the coupon rate you can see that the current price of this bond the face value bond is equal to its face value that means 1000 it will be traded at its face value itself so there is no difference between in this case when the yield to maturity is equal to the coupon rate then the face value of the bond is equal to the current price of the bond and what if the current rate of interest or the yield to maturity is less than the agreed coupon rate of 10 percentage suppose the assume that the due to the demand forces and supply forces the rate of interest is going to be 8.448 percentage so in this case if you plug this value in the formula that we discussed a few minutes before then you will be getting the current price of the price of the bond is going to be 1100 that means bond uh, which is going to be maturing after 10 years with when the current rate of interest is 8.48 it will be currently this one will be traded at 1100 and even when the rate of interest further declines suppose the current rate of interest is 7.13 at that time when the rate of interest decline we already see that so here that there is an inverse relationship between rate of interest and price of bond and obviously the price of bond will increase and in this example it is going to be it will be currently the price the current price of this bond with a face value of 1000 is going to be 1200 uh, so this is the case when we see that when the rate of interest is decreasing what if the current rate of interest yield to maturity is greater than uh, the coupon payment coupon rate so in this case the face value the face value with the 1000 bond it is currently it will be traded at 900 and even when the rate of interest further increase to 13.81 this case then the price of bond further declines uh, it is it will be traded at 800 today so from this uh, illustrative example also you can see that uh, bond price and interest rates are inversely related so I am also going to explain to you, I'll explain it further using a simple illustrative example uh, using inverse relationship between interest rate and bond. So you know to explain this, let us take the case of a perpetuity that means a console that means there is no uh, maturity period for this bond that means a perpetual bond, a console which it doesn't have uh, a maturity period that means it has a indefinite lifetime. So suppose uh, a government bond, a government issued a bond with a market price of uh, 1000. So suppose the, the, let us take this example and look at this, then the coupon payment here is 50 per year. That means there is no principal refund, only you can sell this bond in the market and whoever is buying this one will be entitled for uh, a coupon payment of 50 per year. So what would happen to the capital gain or loss when interest rate changes over time? So in this case, uh, look at this, the date of purchase. Suppose, suppose someone had purchased this bond uh, with the 1000 as the face value. Uh, suppose two months before the person has purchased this one. Suppose you see that, look at this, the market rate of interest at that time, two months before, it was suppose the yield to maturity or the market rate of interest was 5 percentage. So, Obviously, you know that uh, at that day, the bond will be purchased at uh, 1000. So obviously, then let us see after one month, uh, if there is a movement in the rate of interest. Suppose after one month, uh, that means just one month before today, you know that the market rate of interest increases to uh, 10 percentage. So someone, suppose who buys this uh, bond, because this bond will only pay uh, 50 percentage, sorry, 50 dollar per year, right. So that means after one month when the market rate of interest is 10 percentage, the value of this bond, the current price of this 1000 bond is going to be uh, only 500, right. Because somewhere, because this bond is going to give you only 50 dollar. So if you want to get 50 dollar, current, uh, current rate of interest is uh, 10 percentage when the current rate of interest is 10 percent if someone invests buying a bond of um, 500 today uh, is going to get uh, 10 percentage is going to get uh, 50 dollar right so in this case because when the rate of interest increase to 10 percentage from 5 percentage 
and in this case uh, this bonds selling price declined or uh, decreased to 500 from 1000 so you can see that when the rate of interest increase the price of this bond becomes uh, 500 so this person uh, this bond so it was bought at 1000 or two months back and today but after one month uh, the price of this bond the market price of this bond is only 500 so actually those who bought this bond uh, two months back uh, he suffer he or she suffer capital loss of 500 because of uh, the inverse relationship between market price of bond and the interest rate and what if today suppose we take another example another case and the market rate of interest decreased to 2 percentage so in this case you can see that uh, the price because this bond anyway going to give you 1000 bond or anyway going to give you uh, 50 dollar per year doesn't matter what is the current market rate of interest so you you can see that at um, the as a result someone who invests 1000 uh, dollar today is going to get only at a 2 percentage rate of interest going to get only 20 right but this bond is going to give you uh, 50 uh, per year so that means this bond will be sold in the market at uh, 2500 because the current rate of interest is uh, 2 percentage so in this case you can see that the person who bought this bond two months before on this date if he sells this bond today uh, the market price the current price is going to be 2500 so this person is go going to make a capital gain of 1500 so from this uh, illustrative example what you can see that a rise in the market interest rate results in a capital loss on previously bought bonds and a decline in interest rates result uh, in capital gain on previously bought bonds Uh, sometime uh, you see in the uh, newspaper reporting daily uh, business daily reporting like this what does it mean so here suppose this is a fixed rate interest uh, fixed rate uh, uh, coupon bond suppose seven at a 7.17 percentage 10 year benchmark bond uh, maturing in 2028 that means issued in 2018 and sometime what does it mean it slipped to 94.247 per 5 from uh, this what does it mean so that means when the market rate of interest that the yield to maturity because this is the coupon payment right this is the coupon rate uh, when the actual rate of interest or yield to maturity is different then this bond the, because the face value of this bond is 100 so it will be traded if the yield to maturity is greater above 7 point uh, 17 when the this one is above 7.17 so in this case this bond will be traded less than its face value of 100 so then you can see that it is less than here suppose here you can see that uh, 94.2475 so not only that but I am going to say here that because when the market rate of interest fluctuate move and then accordingly this suppose here when the market rate of interest increases from 8.505 percentage to 8.06 percentage anyway this bond will be traded at a rate less than the face value of 100 because the current rate of interest is greater than uh, the coupon payment so what if again within that the current rate of interest uh, increases from uh, rate of interest increases from 8.05 to 8.06 at that time this security or this bond will be traded at um, 94.2475 from 94.2875 that means when the current market rate of interest was 8.05 this bond was traded at uh, 94.2875 actually I, we know that the face value is in fact 100 but it was traded at 94.2875 and if the rate of interest increased to 8.06 then this bond will be traded at 94.2475 so this is how you can when you read the business dailies you can interpret what does it mean
So similarly with the different maturities, so another is uh, fixed rate 6.68 percentage government security uh, maturing in uh, 2020 31. So here also you can apply the same logic in understanding uh, what does it mean by the current price of this bond when the yield to maturity that the rate of interest changes. Same way you can see this one maturing in after 4 years, you can apply the same logic here. This I have shown you just before just to get an idea of different types of government bonds that the one is treasury bill is called money market instrument, debt, market, debt instrument less than one year. This actually the coupon bond and zero coupon bond and then coupon bond also we have discussed. Here we discuss now uh, what is the yield to maturity means the rate of interest. Let us now discuss what is meant by uh, interest rate or how interest rate are determined. So for the next couple of minutes we are going to discuss the determination of interest rate in the market. How? Because we mentioned that the market rate of interest moved for, for example 8.5 percent A to it increased to 8 from 8.5 percent A to 8.9. So at that time because that, that what we are actually may talking there is about the market rate of interest. So now let us discuss how market rate of interest are determined, the determination of interest rate. So in this case in order to understand how market rates or in market interest rates are determined. So we need to discuss the bond markets. So in here we are going to see list and describe the factors that affect uh, equilibrium interest rate in the bond market and then discuss the supply of bond and demand for bond. So to discuss the supply and demand uh, in the bond market, we can see here that at the lower prices the quantity demanded of bond is higher that means there is an inverse relationship and at the lower prices the quantity supplied of bond is lower there is a positive relationship. So when it comes to demand part this part is coming to the demand part um, when the prices are lower the bond prices are lower the quantity demanded of bond will be higher. So similarly, uh, when the prices of bonds are higher, the demand for the bond is going to be lower. So there is an inverse re relationship here when it comes to the demand for bond. Uh, when it comes to the supply of bonds, supply of bonds at the lower prices, when less than the face value, the quantity supplied of bonds will be lower. There is a positive relationship between price of bond and quantity supplied in the bond markets. So we are going to examine this fact, uh, this aspects in details. Coming to the supply part, when the price is low, the quantity demand supplied is going to be lower. Why? Because when the price is low, the price of bond is low, that means the interest rate, the market interest rate is very high, that means the interest rate to be paid on the supplied bond is going to be high, that means it is a costly proposition for the supplies of bonds. So because of that, when the price is low, that means when the interest rate is high, the supplier of bonds it will be less willing to supply of bonds in the market. So because of that, you can see that. Uh, there is a positive relationship. So this idea we can discuss using the demand curve and supply curve. So look at the demand curve here, demand curve you can see here it is uh, negatively sloping. So on the left hand side we denote with the price of bonds and on the horizontal axis, the x axis we are measuring the quantity of bonds. So on the y axis we are measuring the price of bonds, price. So in the bracket uh, we also denote the rate of interest. Uh, you can see from here that on the y axis when the 
price of bond we denoted it like that 750 800 900 950 like this but in bracket you can see that when we are uh, we are increasing the uh, uh, price of bonds uh, reading uh, vertically uh, upwards the increase in the price of bonds you can also see that in the bracket we are denoting the rate of interest is declining because we already discussed uh, there is an inverse relationship between uh, price of bonds and rate of interest so the quantity of bonds is given on the x axis so this curve is negatively sloped that means higher the price there going to be low demand so when the rate uh, price is this one the quantity demanded is going to be 100 and similarly when the when pr price of bond uh, decreases further that means the demand for bond decreases further what does it mean so that means when the price of bond declining sorry the, what i mentioned here is that the quant when the price of bond is 950 the quantity demanded is 100 dollar billion dollar when the price of bond declines that is it declines to decrease to from 950 to 900 the quantity demanded increases in fact sorry i just mentioned it as declining the quantity demanded increases the quantity demanded increases from 100 to 200 billion dollar why because when the price of bond decline decreases that means from 950 to uh, 900 you can see that the rate of interest increases from 5.3 percentage to 11.1 percentage that means the return that you are getting when you are lending money that means in the bond market when you are demanding bond means you are lending your money hard earned money you are lending in the market bond market so when the price of bond declines your rate of interest that you are going to you are going to gain more right you are getting 11.1 percentage so that is how we interpret the inverse relationship between price of bonds and quantity demand the quantity of bonds demanded in the market so that means when price of bonds decreases the demand for bond increases that is about the demand side and what about the supply side so look at when the price of bond is uh, 750 the rate current uh, the rate of interest is 33.30 percentage at that time so when the price of bonds increase to 800 when the price of bond increases to 800 the quantity demanded increases to 200 that means rate of interest decreases when price of bond increases means rate of interest decreases to 25 percentage so similarly suppose when the price of bond keep on increase to uh, 950 when the price of bond is 950 the supply of bond in this market is going to be 500 billion dollars and you know that when the price of bond increased to 950 from 750 the rate of interest decreased declined from 33.0 percentage to 5.3 percentage right so that means from a supplier's supplier's perspective the supplier of bond be it a government or a corporation so for that the cost of borrowing declines because rate of interest for them is the cost of borrowing so that means when the bond price increase that means rate of interest decrease and that means the cost of borrowing uh, decreases and then because of that they borrow more and more so as a result you can see that there is a positive relationship between price of bond and the quantity supplied in the bond market there is a positive relationship so from this diagram let us look at for example the point the point p this point is not going to be the equilibrium point equilibrium point is at a point when supply of bond is equal to the demand for bonds so when look at here point p point p means the price of bond is 9.50 at this point you can see that the you can also see that the price is very high 950 but the market rate of interest is only 5.3 percentage at this point you can see that the market demand is going to be only 100 right so the demand for bond is equal to 100 here but at this price at this rate of interest you can see that the supply of bond is going to be this uh, 500 so supply of bond uh, is going to be 500 
So, you can clearly see that supply is greater than demand here. So, you can see this much excess demand, excess supply is in the market, right? Excess supply of bonds. So, just to summarize this point, when the price is 950 in the market, uh, you can see that price is 950 in the market there is a uh, deficiency of demand because rate of interest is very low uh, only 100 dollar will be demanded 100 billion dollar will be demanded but supply of bonds are 500 billion dollar because the rate of interest is very low so as a result uh, what happened that the supplies of uh, supplier of bonds they are willing to accept there will be a downward pressure on the price there will be there is going to be a downward pressure here a downward pressure on the price uh, the supplies of bonds are willing to accept a lower price for this bond that means they are actually willing to accept a lower price that means they are willing to pay high rate of interest so when the rate of interest increase or when the price of bond decreases the demand for bond also gradually increase right so when the price of bond decrease that means rate of interest increase that means there is a gradual increase in the demand for bonds then you can see that there will be when the price decrease that means the rate of interest decrease there will be a downward pressure uh, there will be a decline in the uh, supply of bonds so finally you can see that there is going to be equilibrium point is going to be here so at this point you can see that there is uh, excess supply excess supply of bonds excess supply of bonds and what if the um, price is uh, going to be 750 what if the price of this bond is going to be 750 that means the rate of industry is 33.6 is zero so at this type place you can see that the demand for bond is going to be 500 and supply of bond is going to be uh, only 100 because you can see that the rate of industry is very high 33.3 so for the demand is they are getting very high return so they will be demanding 500 but the supply is only 100 so because of that there is going to be an upward pressure on the price of this bond uh, the price of there because there is excess demand here so you can see that uh, this much is excess demand that is excess demand is going to be 400 that is the excess demand so because of that there will be upward pressure on the price and price increases and finally this is going to be the equilibrium price so from this figure what we have seen that the price of bond or you can also see in another words you can say that the rate of interest is determined by the uh, demand for and supply of bonds so in this case you can see that the price of bond is going to be 850 and the market rate of interest is going to be 17.6 percentage this is the rate of interest so this rate of interest is being determined in this diagram by the demand and supply forces so in the next session uh, we will discuss the various aspects of the supply and demand of bonds in detail then we will see what are the factors that affect the supply and demand for bonds. Thank you.